Hey guys, what has a USB microscope to do with a video about using a TV as a monitor? I bought this TV last year and have been using it as a monitor. I'm around 80% happy. I promise you, you will learn something useful in this video. So if you ever thought about using a TV as a monitor, do watch this video. The way I structured this video is first we will talk about the benefits of using a TV as a monitor and why I chose to go down that route. Then I will cover how to best set up your computer and your TV to get the best image. And finally, I will give my uh, conclusion. Would I buy this particular model of TV again? Or is there something you should look out for a specific feature in another model? Now, the reason I went with a TV is because I wanted a huge image and I didn't want to use display scaling. I wanted to have a native resolution without any display scaling. And I like the look of a 22 or 24 inch monitor at 1080p. So if you double the size, that's the equivalent in a 4K TV or monitor of 44 inches or 48 inches. Now, I was looking at two sizes, 43 inch and 50 inch, 50 inch is better value for a hundred Australian dollars more. You get a significantly larger TV, but I found that size too large. 43 is a good size to be used comfortably. My desk is 80 centimeters deep and it's just the right size for me. There are a couple of other benefits that are noticed. Um, apart from the larger image, you also get a much better sound. Now, many monitors have speakers built in, but they are really weak. Even monitors that advertise or promote that they have decent speakers, they are no match to a TV. Now, of course, a good sound bar or decent speakers will always be better than the sound of the monitor. But at least for me, the sound quality is significantly better what you get with a monitor and it's sufficient for what I do. On top of that, there are many options. You can use uh, audio through HDMI. It has an optical port. It has an analog headphone port and it even can use Bluetooth, so you can connect the TV to Bluetooth headphones or Bluetooth speakers. You also get a remote control. And at first I didn't think this was much of a feature, but it's actually quite useful, especially changing the volume quite quickly and uh, changing the inputs and some of the image settings. You also get smart TV features, so you can stream Disney, you can stream Netflix and Amazon, and I do that a lot so I can watch TV in the lab and compared to running uh, streaming services on the PC, it's a, on the PC it's a bit of a challenge. Most uh, streaming platforms through the browser run at 720p or 1080p. Netflix has a Windows 10 app, but it needs a special, a certain CPU and graphics card to do 4K. And I'm not sure if Amazon and Disney have 4K through the PC. Now, granted, you can buy something like an Amazon a Fire Stick or a Google TV stick and upgrade the smart features to your monitor. And the process is actually better than what this TV has, but it's nice, it's integrated, and you can use it out of the box. And finally, the TV has a heap of inputs. You get three or four HDMI ports, but you also get an analog TV tuner. So that lets you maybe connect an old console or home computer and it even has composite. So again, you can connect old camcorders, old home computers, and yeah, VGA to S uh, video or VGA to composite adapters. So there's just more flexibility compared to most monitors. And now I will talk about some of the settings that you need to be aware of. Basically, when you connect a TV to a computer, uh, the TV and the uh, computer, they make some assumptions. They assume you are you want to use it as a TV and that's not what we want. We want to use it as a monitor. So we have to tell the computer, hey, treat this as a monitor. And we have to tell the TV, hey, this is a computer as an input. It's not a console. It's not a set-top box. Let's start with the display settings first. I have a NVIDIA video card. You find similar options with AMD Radeon and with Intel. So if you see things like RGB or YCBCR422, you want to make sure it's set to RGB. If you see something like a pixel format, 444, 442, 422, you want to go with 444. And with the color range or HDMI color space, 
you want to make sure it's set to full. We also need to make a few changes to the TV. We basically need to tell the TV that we are connecting a PC and not a game console or a set-top box. And every TV and every model is slightly different. This TCL TV makes it really easy. You go into the picture mode and it has a setting called picture mode PC. And that's exactly what we need. It will uh, treat the color space uh, uh, as full RGB and it disables any image processing like uh, motion compensation, noise reduction and so on. And also the input lag will be minimal. Now, if your TV does not have a PC mode, the next best setting is the game mode. So this is meant for game consoles. It means it has low latency and it also disables a lot of the image processing. You might have to dig a little bit deeper and look for the color space. So if you see something call about black level or HDMI color range, make sure it's set to full range to match the setting that we did on the computer before in the NVIDIA control panel. Now, if your television doesn't have a PC mode and it also doesn't have a game mode, then yeah, it's a bit of a challenge. You need to go into the picture settings. So I'm just going to demonstrate that we are under Vivid and here we have advanced settings and you want to disable any sort of image processing. For example, we have under color, dynamic color, we can turn that off. We have under clarity, sharpness should be all the way to zero. Noise reduction should be turned off. Under motion, we have motion clarity. Any image processing, turn all that stuff off and then the input lag should become a lot better. The colors might not be 100% accurate, but it's the best shot you have. And now we're getting to the part with the USB microscope. So I'm just gonna hold it to our TV and I've got some footage here that will show it in more detail. It basically shows us the pixels. Now, what the heck is a pixel? The image on a TV or monitor is made out of colored, a lot of colored squares and each square is called a pixel and each of the pixels has three subpixels, red, green and blue. And by mixing those colors together, we can display all the colors that we need to display our image. On a traditional monitor, these subpixels are from left to right in red, green and blue. However, on TVs and even on some monitors, the panel is basically flipped 180 degrees. So instead of going from left to right with red, green, blue, it goes blue, green and red. Now with images, video games, photos and videos, that has no impact whatsoever. But when it comes to displaying text, that can cause problems. Windows uses a technology called clear type and it uses this sub pixel information to apply anti-aliasing to text to make it look smoother. But because the subpixels are basically rotated by 180 degrees, this clear type technology doesn't work with text anymore. And we're getting some sort of a color fringing, some sort of a blurry uh, effect to do with text. Now, there is a software utility that you can run. It's called Better Clear Type Tuner. And there's a setting here. You can toggle between RGB and BGR and it gives you a preview where you can see sort of some color fringing going uh, around the text. Now this works for most applications, um, not for all of them, but after running this it has really made the image a lot better and addressed that weird uh, feeling I got when reading text on this TV. Now these days I'm not much of a gamer. I do play older games every now and then. Here we have Half-Life 2 running at 4K and the image is beautiful and we're getting excellent performance. But if you're playing some more demanding games, you will quickly find that uh, an average video card might struggle at the 4K resolution. Also, this panel in this TV is a VA panel. It has some challenges with viewing angles. Um, the image is nice and clear when looking straight from the front. So if you sit in front of the TV, the center area looks nice and clear, but as you look into the edges, the colors do shift a little bit. Now, what I like to do when playing games is I play at a lower resolution and I turn on centered GPU scaling in the driver. So I'm lowering, um, I will lower the resolution from 4K to 1440p and I will show you what that looks like. 
So we will have uh, black bars going all around it. At first you might feel, well, that looks a bit silly, but for gaming this is actually, I find more comfortable because if the, if the image is too large, you actually find it a bit hard to see the entire scene. I find that easier. It's also um, easier, less uh, computational intense on the video card, so you get better FPS and yeah, works really well. Something else I noticed is when I looked into the supported resolutions, we get a additional resolution of 4096 by 2160. This is actually the proper 4K instead of UHD or Ultra HD. So there's a bit of a confusion with standards. Now, doesn't really affect us too much, but if you're using technologies like virtual super resolution or dynamic super resolution, this can cause some issues. So what you can do is entirely remove that resolution. And there's a utility called custom resolution utility. You launch that tool. I will try putting links to some of the resources I mentioned in this video down below in the video description. So down here, click on edit. We get here 19, uh, 6, 18 TV resolutions. Click on edit and then all the ones that say 4096, delete them one by one. There should be a third one here. And now we press OK, press OK, press OK, and then we will reboot the machine. So it looks like I forgot another setting. Go edit HDMI support, and down here we're gonna delete this one. And I think now the settings should stick. There you go, display resolution, click on it, and that resolution is gone with 3840 by 2160 as the highest option. So in the beginning of the video, I mentioned I'm 80% happy. What about the other 20%? Well, in hindsight, if I bought another TV, if I made that purchase decision again, I would insist on getting a TV with a variable refresh rate. Even if the panel is 60 hertz, it means you can lock the refresh rate in the game or in the driver to 57 or 58 hertz. And then you get a tearing free uh, image, but with very low latency. I like to use VSync in order to get a tearing free image, but the input latency is a little, is a little bit higher. Now, 120 hertz display would be even better. Here in Australia, we're getting, yeah, we seem to be getting lower specifications. For example, with Hisense, they've got really good value TVs, 120 hertz with HDMI 2.1, but the Australian models only have 60 hertz panels. So really disappointing, but yeah, that is one area there where I would pick another model to get 100% satisfaction. So guys, there you have it. My video on using a TV as a monitor. We had a look at the benefits. We looked at some settings to make sure that the computer and the monitor, uh, the TV are perfectly set up. And then I showed you some more deeper, more advanced tweaks to help you get the best image. I'm really eager to hear from you. Uh, have you thought about using uh, a TV as a monitor? Have you done it before? What is your feedback? What is your experience? please share your comments down below. And as always, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Um, and that's it, give, us, give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and I shall see you soon with another one.